All right, back with another video. So in one of our previous videos, we talked about Mac apps and the best ones that are useful for most people with iMacs or MacBooks and stuff. But in this video, we'll talk about some of the best Windows apps. And if you're one of those who likes Windows apps, this video is for you. And just like we do it with our Mac video, we're not gonna go with the generic you know, apps that you normally see in every other YouTube video. For example, there are certain Windows apps that are really popular. Everything just says faster on Windows search. Atrum to manage the audios of various devices connected to your you know, Windows computer. Quick look to get Mac OS like preview on Windows PC. And finally, we have another popular one, Taskbar X, which gives you control over the position of your taskbar icons. See, now the point is, these apps are great and all, but they've been, you know, beaten to death like a dead horse on YouTube by many of the YouTubers. Anyway, I'm Vamzi, and in this video, we'll check out some of the best Windows apps that are useful in 2021. <laughs> Ever since Microsoft announced Windows 11, there's been a lot of confusion around the minimum requirements for you know, Windows 11. Earlier, Microsoft released PC Health app to check whether your PC is compatible for Windows 11. However, the app is now missing from the official website. So instead, you can just use an open source app called Why Not Windows 11 it's more descriptive than the PC Health and tells exactly what the issue is. For example, it'll tell you the TBM version that you have and can enable it if it's compatible. So also side note, just a few days ago, Microsoft actually released a preview build of Windows 11 and even made the ISOs available for the public. To get it first, click on this link and it'll take you to the Microsoft Inside Preview Downloads page. You'll have to sign in with your Microsoft account to proceed further. If you don't have one, just create one. It's easy as pie. From there, you can either choose to download either the Windows 11 dev or beta build. Once you have the ISO, you can install Windows 11 using Rufus. For that, just follow any online tutorial and you're good to go. And then move it on. Now, you might know of Microsoft Your Phone Companion app that just you know connects seamlessly between your PC and your Android. But even after tons of iterations and upgrades, you still can't send a, you know, a direct file from say Windows PC to an Android app. So I instead use KDE Connect, a phone companion app that's ported from Linux. Now it's still in beta, but you can connect your PC without any email or sign up. Once you connect your phone, the process to send files is just you know two to three taps away. Additionally, when in need, you can use your phone as a trackpad for your PC wirelessly. However, here's my favorite feature. If I have a media playing on my Windows PC, I can control the playback from my Android phone seamlessly. Now the only problem with KDE Connect is that the app works only over Wi-Fi. So if you're on mobile data, it disconnects from your Windows machine. Next up is our very own Smartiness Proxy. I know, I know, it's a shameless plug that we've done many a times, but hey, check it out. Windows app for Smartiness Proxy is actually really good and it's just seamless and you know smooth. So Smartiness Proxy lets you change your country with the app. For example, say if you wanna watch The Office US, which is not on Netflix US anymore, but in the UK. So with the Smartiness Proxy VPN, I can simply turn it on from the toolbar, change the country to UK, and then when I search for the Office US in Netflix, it'll appear out of nowhere, which is exactly what you want. There's also a feature called Smart VPN in selected servers, which not only lets you watch shows both in US and UK at the same time. So if you're keen on that, check out the link in the description below, click on that, go check out smartdnsproxy.com, see if you're interested in it, and then go from there. Okay, this one's not an app, but I found a Windows fingerprint reader accessory that you really should get. It's on Amazon for about 10 to $20, so you should snag one where you can. Just look for USB fingerprint reader and make sure that it's compatible with Hello Windows. It's like the fingerprint unlock on MacBook and even you know some Windows PCs like the ThinkPad which supports it natively. I mean, see how fast it is. All right, moving on. We've got a free software media system called Jellyfin. Now, you might have heard of you know, Plex Media, which lets you seamlessly transfer files or just stream them directly from literally any device. But lately, it has gotten a bit restrictive. And if you use the Plex Media app on your phone, it costs about $5 for a one-time payment. So if you're linked to jump ship and try a new media you know, system, then Jellyfin is the way to go. 
First of all, Jellyfin is totally free and it's available on most platforms like Android, iOS, Android TV, PlayStation, Fire TV Stick, Roku and etc. Pretty much, you know, everything. Now, setting up Jellyfin is similar to Plex. You have a central streaming server where you set up your movies, photos and videos folder. Then you can connect your server via the mobile app and stream your content either on the same network or remotely. And unlike Plex, which pulled out the support for third party plugins, Jellyfin supports plugins, so you can automatically fit subtitles for your movies using a plugin called Open Subtitles. I use it when I'm watching a foreign movie and found the stability of the app really good, so give it a go. Right, the next Windows app is for actually everyone. It's called an all-in-one app. So there are two good options for all-in-one browser, France and Station, which both of them are now actually paid. So here's a free alternative, Stack Browser. So first of all, this one is also free. I mean, completely free with no nudging or app limit. And you can add as many apps as you want. Now I currently use this with Notion, Trello, Slack, WhatsApp web. This way, I don't have to pen four different apps and then juggle between them. It's super productive, stable, and doesn't eat up much RAM or battery as well. I've been using this for five months and never faced any software crashes or any non-responsiveness, which blows my mind, to be honest. So those are some of the fresh Windows apps that you might not have heard of and I'm pretty sure that you might even try one of them if you liked one of them. If so, let us know in the comment section below. As always, I'm Vamzi, thanks for watching and if you're new here, click on that subscribe button and that bell icon so that you get notified every time we put out a new video and it just comes in that little box and you can watch it as long as you can. I'm Vamzi again, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.